What's up guys, John Hammond here, still checking out some of the Google Capture the Flag uh, beginner quest challenges from the previous competition this past weekend. Before we jump in, I want another shout out to Live Overflow. I know I've done this for literally every single video that I've had released in this series, um, but I just really, really want to tip my hat to him. Um, he's a super cool guy, um, was willing to hang out with me and uh, try, try our hands at this Google CTF together, um, and he did some rock solid cool awesome work on some of the legitimate challenges during the game i did this baby stuff in the the noob category in the beginner's quest um but he is a genius and um you should totally check him out on youtube all right let's get into the game and see where we left off beginner's quest i'm kind of on this top track here um getting into the yellow next one is a uh, challenge is called gatekeeper so reverse engineering challenge supposedly um and I actually did do a little bit of reverse engineering in this challenge. Not a whole lot, <laughs> um, but enough to, I guess, to be considered a reverse engineering challenge in my eyes. Um, so let's save this file. Get a command line open where we can work with it. And get into the directory. Um, this is another zip file, as we have seen with just about everything. Let's call it gatekeeper.zip, so we can unzip it without a problem. And we have this file, gatekeeper, which is a binary. So let's mark it executable and let's try and play with it. Oop, I have an L there. When I run gatekeeper, there's this neat animation thing here. Gatekeeper, access your PC from everywhere, login information missing. Okay, so I need to pass it a uh, username and password. I don't know any username and password, though, so... Access your PC from everywhere, and it does this verifying thing. It takes some time, it looks like, uh, but whatever. Okay, access denied, incorrect username. That's some neat printout effect, but it doesn't really help me. So let's do the low-hanging fruit. Let's just run strings on this guy. Um, I can list through this. Um, and we see some of the regular ones, gatekeeper, access denied, login information thing, etc. And I see some odd ones. Uh, one warm, I think. And clicks D4AM. T0GI. Those things look peculiar and those things look weird. Um, I don't know where or how they go though. So one thing I tried is I actually opened up Hopper and if you haven't used Hopper before it's a pretty awesome disassembler that is essentially free. Uh, the demo will run for 30 minutes but it's also not that expensive to buy. Um, I think it was only like $90 by the time I bought it. Um, I don't know if they've upped their price, their prices or anything, but so we can see the strings and the labels, etc. Uh, points over here, and again, these strings are over in the tabs on the on the side here. And I see that one warm string in Elite Speak, and they're all being referenced in Main. So I went to Main to view the disassembly and and uh and all those opcodes. But if I wanted to, I could Alt Enter and see the C like pseudocode. And it doesn't show me these things all that easily, except that it does tell me it actually pretty easily. <laughs> um, if we don't supply the arguments, it'll tell us, okay, here's the usage. Otherwise, it'll choose some text animation on verifying. Looks like these are the functions that it's trying to call. And it checks, okay, if string compare one warm, uh, looks like that's the username we're trying to look at. You can see that here being denoted as that's, that's the test. Um, and it will print out the flag if we get the right password, supposedly. I don't know what this loop is doing, though. Um, string compare, Zilix, D4M, I, tog, whatever. Um, so let's try and try and try those strings to see um, if they are something that we actually want. Let's run gatekeeper, that was a username, supposedly, and we'll try this as the password, just like that. We'll go through that animation, verifying, verifying, verifying. That takes however long it needs to take, however. Access denied, incorrect password. Okay, so our username seems to be correct, but our password is wrong. So looking at this for more than a couple seconds, you can probably start to see this is something backwards. This says, I got mad skills and lead speak backwards. So we can reverse this if we really wanted to. Uh, let's do that in Python idle. Reversed. It's I got mad skills. And that is the password that we need to use. And it can give this to us in, um, it'll give us the flag.
Like once we're once we've got that typed in, we're good. Correct. There's the flag. And okay, literally for some reason I don't know why that password is the is the flag, but let's let's take note of that. Um, nano flag dot text. CTF curly braces surrounding that. Cool. We're good. Um, and you could write a get flag script for that really easily if you wanted to, because you're all you're doing is passing that in and cutting up the the last line. Um, I. I did see this just kind of at first glance when I realized that string was backwards, but if you want to do a little bit more like true um, reversing, I suppose, you can... I ran ltrace and stuff on this, and this is pretty annoying, right, because it says... Uh, password. Let's give it something. It just pumps out all these functions because of the sleep and the flush that it's doing when it's trying to create these animations. Um, but it does do some, like, loops here. You saw that happen. And we can probably assume it's going to run a string compare. So if you wanted to grep for that, str compare, you totally could. Remember, ltrace and strace are going to be piping or uh, sending all that output to their standard error stream because it, they want to be able to show that as well as the computer program, like the binary that you're trying to run, showing that originally on standard output. So the standard error is where all their debugging information is going to go. So if we wanted to uh, actually be able to grep through that stuff, we'd have to pipe to or redirect to the standard error stream to standard output. So ampersand one, so we can see it on standard output and then grep through that. So now once I hit enter, it's not going to get all those put character and flush and sleep commands, but eventually it'll hit the string compare and eventually it'll hit another string compare, where it's testing if the password we supplied backwards is the same as what we'd seen it as the string. So, okay, it's clearly doing something to manipulate the string backwards, and that's probably what we saw way up here earlier when that was flashing by and there was a segment that did an interesting loop, it looked like. So, that's some of the techniques you could use to figure out, okay, it's reversing the string. But, whatever, we've got the flag. Um, is it still on my clipboard? Whatever. Let's, you know, we can wrap that in a CTF and submit, and we're good. Let's mark that as complete, and we have completed another one of the Beginner's Quest Challenges in Google CTF. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you're enjoying these videos. Um, and want another shout-out to Live Overflow. Check him out on YouTube. Um, thanks again for him, and thanks again for uh, being willing to actually explore some of this Captured Flag competition with me. So... Hey, if you did like the video, please press that button to like the video. Uh, if you'd like to leave me a comment, let me know what you think or what else I could do better, what else you'd like to see. And if you're willing to subscribe, and if you really, really want to help me out, I would love it if you were to click on one of the advertisements during the video. That helps me put food on the table. So, thanks again. See you soon.